Hi, good morning everyone. Today is an amazing day. I hope your day is blessed as always. I um, just want to talk about something that God has laid on my heart. Um, it was throughout this week and you know, I just have to pray on it and God wanted me to come on and speak about this because people are going through it. People are, you know, needing help. They need a rescue. They don't know exactly what to do. They don't know what to say um, in their relationship, in their marriage. And some people don't know if they're right to be together. Um, but you just have to seek God out, pray about it, you know. And, you know, the Bible also talks about how to handle your life. He tells us and warns us about everything that will go on. So he also tells us pray to him, ask him for things, you know. And, you know, try or, or test God in a good way. You know, if you want God to do something for you and, you know, you, you want to have this faith to say, you know, Lord, I know you're going to do it for me. So let me see if this is you, if, you know, you're probably that person who wants to see God, you know, do something before I guess you've seen, you know, this miracle. Um, you know, you, it's okay for, for now. You just ask God to help you um, with your unbelief. And, you know, there's people in the Bible who said things like this too. They wanted God to do a miracle first or, uh, you know, for them to see who God really is. And of course, you know, God wants to see your faith. He would rather see your faith than you to say, let me see a miracle first. Um, so, you know how you are in in this mindset, well, I'm going to get a job. You don't see that job yet. You don't know you're getting that job, but yet you believe you have that faith, right? So God wants you to give that faith to him, you know, give it to him. You don't see him, but guess what? You're going to say, Lord, I trust you. And I'm going to, you know, I'm going to see what happens i'm just going to give you a small a little mustard seed give you a little bit of my faith and see what you do with it let me see just what happens you know and that right there would please god what you said right there will please him and he would grow your faith so big you know and we need our faith to be bigger so i do just want to hurry up and just get into this chapter you guys need to hear this you need to know how to work on you know problems within your marriage um and maybe problems before marriage uh, maybe you've been proposed to women maybe you know you have not maybe you are just you know in a relationship and you don't know if you should marry a guy um or you know you men too you don't know if you should marry the woman you don't know if you want to be with her you know you love her you just you're having problems so number one of course you need to go to god you need to ask god and seek god first before you go into an actual relationship you know you don't want to just hurt and rush and the bible says that god is patient he's a patient god you know god is love and you know if you get into something that is not of love it is not of patience it, it will not work out at all it will just fail so you're trying to rush and rush because you want love these things are gonna fail is it would never work out and i've always seen this like since i was a little girl like i would just see a lot of things and i know for a fact that is not gonna work out no because you see that it's not right first of all if god give you that eye and you just have that gift you can definitely see it but you know for a fact that this is not gonna work out and you try to help someone out you know some people don't like to hear opinions they know in their minds that this thing is right and you know it fails and you just want to help out that's all if people don't take your advice okay but wanting to just seek god first just seek him about everything so you know sometimes you won't have to have another person come to you and you know speak into your life when you don't want to hear it god is actually telling you these things and it's not just through dreams you know god speaks to us regardless while we're woke give us visions he literally like speak to us when his let us hear his voice his audible voice so you know he speaks to us all in different ways he can be speaking to you through the floor or the tv or you know the blank tv he could be speaking to you through a cup or a color anything even a piece of tissue and i've been seeing that people haven't seen that too um but we just have to listen we just have to pray and speak to God and say, well, what do I want? Should I go into this relationship? Should I go and, and, and you know, seek her? Should I go and open up my heart to him? Um, I don't trust or, you know, I my, my heart been broken. What do I do? 
and you let him tell you you pray and ask God you know um, just like Adam knew his wife Eve you know you pray and ask God to know your wife you you pray and ask God to know your husband um, and, and tell you who your husband is or tell you who your wife is you want to know before you go into this marriage thinking that it's going to last you have to hear God's voice and just like you know I'm sitting here you need to sit and speak to God and ask God how should you you know approach the situation first you know if you know you already say you have God in your life and now all you need or you or you feel like you need is a spouse then go ahead and pray but if you're asking God for a husband or a wife and you don't have God yet you know it's like you need to get God because he is your help you have to have God in the center you have to have God inside of your life number one so that he can be around you everywhere so he's helping you out with everything and he knows for a fact what you want and he's gonna bless it into your life because why are you putting him number one you're doing everything he tells you to do and the Bible says that we are made for God therefore like, we're not getting up in the morning time looking at our phone the number one thing is we thanking God for waking us up and looking after us while we're asleep you know there could have been a bur burglary attack in the area and it, it did not hit you you better be thankful I don't know what goes on but in my mind I think about a lot of things how I was protected even when I was a little baby like I was protected I'm still here you know things could have happened in your past you could have rolled off the couch into a candle but God didn't let that happen and even though I don't know if that happened but still like it makes me want to go back so deep and think wow I'm still here you know because God protected you so that's number one have God first and then you start to seek after whatever you feel like your heart is going after these are your um, your desires and God is gonna bless your desires if these desires fit right with God you know if God is pleased with these things and it's okay to have then yes um, so right before you say oh I like her or I like him I want to go after them you know, um, see God for it first. Let him tell you it's okay. You want to ask permission and everything. You know, so people may call me crazy, but I would try to see God after everything. Like, I would pray over a little bag of chips when I used to eat, you know, chips. Um, but I would pray over the littlest things because I just wanted God permission and everything. I never wanted anything to fail. And, you know, that says a lot. That says that you have a lot of respect for God. And that's what he likes. He wants you to put him number one. Um, so I do want to talk about how, you know, there's just like arguments in a relationship. And, you know, arguments like right when you get in a relationship. It, it's fresh and it's new and you're arguing, you know. Or, you know, this could be a fresh marriage and you're arguing. Like, it's just, it's sickening, you know. And these things happen because you are not really equally yoked to be together you want to be equally yoked always if you know for a fact that you don't want your first marriage to be in turmoil and arguments you want to see God fast you want to see him do everything because guess what things will last for a very 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 long time you know maybe forever he's giving you these things for a very long time you know of course this world will end one day but god is letting you you know borrow these things we are borrowing each other you know we don't belong to each other here we belong to god like i said the bible says that we are made for god and we're just borrowing each other just like you asked me to borrow a pen so that you can go take a test you know like you're gonna you know that you're gonna give it back to me right so we belong to god we know for a fact that our bodies our soul is going to go back to god we we are borrowing each other we're praying like lord can can i have her as a wife lord can i have him as a husband um we're borrowing each other just like you know i say can i can i see your pain lord can i see him in my life forever lord can i see her in my life forever we want to give each other back you know we're, we're going to you know give this person back to god one day you know so we should be happy and so thrilled that you know we get to borrow each other like you know this pen I, I was so happy you know to borrow a pen from you because i had to go take a test you know and i didn't have any other pen i'm just so excited that you let me you know borrow your pen and i finally passed the test because without the pen guess what i would be like sad and 
I will fail my test. I'll probably fail my class. I have to take this class over again next year, right? So you're so happy and so grateful that you got placed somebody in your life. And guess what? That person in your life was so happy. He treated you really good. She treated you really good. Um, and this is just amazing, right? And so now I'm a person, you know, let's just say God takes a person to heaven. You're appreciative. You're really happy that the person don't have to suffer on earth anymore, right? So that's the same thing how I see it. Um, no matter what it is, no matter what God gives you for that time being, you appreciate it. Why? Because it was so good in your life and it wasn't turmoil. It wasn't bad. You didn't argue about anything. And you know for a fact this is meant to be because this person was so nice to you. And you were so nice to them. And there's something I do want to talk more about is about arguing. Our arguing in relationships. I just believe it's not okay arguing in front of kids it's not okay um arguing with your kids cursing at your kids none of these things are okay it's just not okay it, it damages the person's brain it damages the kid's brain and you just don't want it um so like i said you pray for everything you ask god before you get into a relationship is it right for you and have time give god time god is patient right so you may be sitting here you know on your little couch and you may say lord i need you i need your help i've been through bad relationships and i'm tired i'm just so tired you know men don't treat me right women don't treat me right i don't know what to do right god is patient so he may answer you you know maybe but an hour later two hours later two months later two years later you have to be patient you're sitting on your couch you have to be willing to be patient with god why because he's patient he may not come on your time but he's always on time so like i said sometimes like i'm sitting talking to god and i get an answer you know sometimes just like that sometimes it comes within 20 minutes sometimes it comes within an hour sometimes it comes the next day so god you know he tests us sometimes and he he's probably like okay let me see if she's willing to talk to me let me see if you know he's willing to talk to me sitting all those hours how long will this person how long will he or she sit there and seek me how long do you spend time with me how how much do you want this you know so we have to give god that time and i just say okay lord i'm finished sit like sit for probably about an hour and talk to him these things are so important sit for two hours three hours you know sometimes god may give me up at 2 30 in the morning and you know i'm sitting there praying and you, it's something that you have to do god says get up and do it you do it why are you being hard-headed God gave you breath. He gave you life. He gave you everything you wanted. He put a roof over your head. And then he says, get up. And you say, no. Your life could be taken just like that. And then, you know, you wish you had life. If you read the story in the Bible time, you think about Lazarus. He wants to tell his family, don't come to hell. He said, this is a bad place. And he wanted Abraham to warn his brothers and his family, don't come to hell. You know? And... You don't want to get up in the morning at 2.30 and pray or whatever a.m. he's getting you up in the morning you, because you're tired and your eyes hurt. You better climb out of that bed so hard, so fast. You better jump up because God is no one to play with. You never want to see God's wrath. You never want to feel God's wrath. You don't want him to be angry at you at all. So there's sometimes in the morning time I get up, you know, uh, I have to wash my face. That wakes you up. You want to throw some cold water in your face. You want to you know warm you up some water and drink it and get yourself prepared to start praying seriously i mean if that's what you have to do sometimes you know i don't even have to do that god give me enough energy to just jump up and i start praying like fast 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 because he wants me to start praying fast sometimes you know just depending on how he wants me to go i'll go and do that so you just be obedient when he's telling you, you know, certain things because why you're seeking him, you're praying for your husband or wife, whatever you're praying for, you want to be obedient. Like if he tells you, oh, don't go on a date with him today. I want you to go on a date with him tomorrow. I said, so if you go that time, guess what? Things are not going to work out. And you're going to be sad. So obey the Lord. And, you know, maybe he wants to give you something really big that next day you go out on a date. He's telling you everything to wear. He's telling you, you know, 
just just different things and you go out on a day and you, and you ruin it and you wonder what happened and then you probably even get into an argument like you don't know so just all day so that everything can be right um there are just you know certain situations in my life where i had to obey i said yep i'm gonna listen to you and god says i'm gonna bless you because you listen and it feels good to listen so just listen okay um so just like situations uh, i want to tell you you're in the relationship i don't know you may be living together and sin you may be living together you know not married of course that's sin um you may be living together and you are newlywed you may be living together and he proposed to you just you know you you are arguing you don't know how each other is in a relationship you know by living together and you notice that when you know the female come home from work and the man is you know having his shoes in front of the door and you know just like little coffee cups here and there probably like a little sock and you know usually a woman you know she'll get mad she come over she don't want to trip over anything she may fall you know she don't want to fall on her face she want to come home um the place smelling really good right and of course a guy wants the same exact thing but when she comes in she don't like what she sees and you know she argue with him and just like telling him to pick up this stuff and you know don't have it like this and you know she just kind of complaining and that's how you just start to argue throughout the whole day and you know he, he starts to come back at her with you know things that he don't like what she does and just a big argument just like explosive argument and it and then you know people around here and it's just too much and you have to think about what happens if you have kids and you're arguing with the kids like that just is too much so in order to avoid situations um i want to talk to you about a scripture so let me just read something um so in ephesians chapter 5 um verse 22 it tells us to submit to our husbands and like i said if you know, you're new to seeking God, you want to ask God to save you. I have a lot of videos on here that you can go to. Um, it tells you how to get your life saved, um, to, you know, seek God and just live with God forever. Um, so once you've done that, you get to, you know, pray and ask God for other things and ask God for how to submit to your husband. Um, maybe you're not married. Maybe you want to be submissive. Maybe you want to do everything God is telling you to do. So you want to ask God, how do I be a submissive wife? Father God, just talk to me before I get married. Show me how to be a submissive wife. Because God's not going to let you be married if you're not ready for marriage. You know, there's a lot of people who are not all the way, you know, together, um, you know, in the mind and probably not mature. You have to understand men are less mature sometimes or they're they are slowly maturing and we are already mature so you have to understand that if you can think about that um you would do less arguing with them because you what you already know right you already know these things so it's just like why are you arguing with a man why are you arguing with your husband the love of your life because he's doing these things and you know he may come in like i said you trip over in his shoe right you know for a fact you're more mature just like you know you already know this and so when you come into the door guess what you're gonna do you're gonna pick up that shoe and you're gonna put it to the side where it belongs with all the other shoes right and then as you're walking you, you still see the coffee cup you see you see that mess right so you're gonna take that cup you're gonna put it into the sink you're gonna rinse it out wash it whatever you do to put it up and then you're gonna spray something to make it smell good in the house and then you're gonna put up like that little sock that was on the floor just put it up put it in the laundry and just make it smell so good before he even gets to see you he's right in the back somewhere but you know you're making it look a little bit better when you finally go to the back and you know you see your husband you greet him and you know you say hey babe how's your day um did you eat anything are you hungry whatever you're gonna say to him um and then you just give him compliments you say babe i like how you keep the place clean it smells so good in here it just looks so nice and neat and just give him compliments and you know kiss him hug him and let him know he's done a good job today and then it makes him feel so good and you just made his day and of course i'm talking about husbands and wives 
and you know he probably turns on by you now he's really feeling this compliment you gave him and now he's like okay i'm gonna do this for her every day and then he starts to put out candles for you he starts to make it smell better you know and just start to do way more for you because of that little thing you did and it was a big thing you turned it to a big thing why because guess what you don't have to complain you basically you know still had him clean up without you arguing you fixed it instead of making it turmoil right and so this is just things that you want to do and you have no idea i've been having just all of these good thoughts in my mind as a little kid to avoid arguments to help out situations you know not just in my life with other people and it just feels so good to just be at peace avoid arguments guys and not just like you know with the situation with it could be anything but if you're one of those people who is like really strict and you're like i want to tell him because he's not listening let's just say you have a guy that's not listening it could be a girl too it's not always on the guy it's not always on the man it's not always on the husbands it could be on the wives too because you know we get tired you know we have emotion and i know men have emotion um so we go through these things in life we're not perfect um so the wife or the husband can you know have all these things going on like your partner would be like like so tired of it because you're not listening like so you are talking to your husband or your wife and they're not listening uh, because of what they're going through you may not know they're going through something because they probably have a smile on their face so you have to get down to the problem you have to understand what the answer is so what you're doing is you probably want to go more into it and talk to them um but when you come into that house and you know you see your husband and you're like oh babe this is on the floor and oh babe i just tripped over that shoe i don't want to hurt myself can you just like help me like you know clean this stuff up oh what is this doing right here oh this coffee is right here oh babe can you just put this in the sink can you wash some of these dishes here and I'll just probably do a little bit of cleaning right here. And then you probably see something that you've been talking to him for about maybe a year. It could be a year. I don't know. But you feel like you don't want to argue. Um, so you're letting him know just a little bit more, maybe boldly, um, instead of going to the first method that I told you about. So I understand like you're, you're fed up too. Um, and if you feel like you can't do, you know, the first method that I told you, just try with this instead of arguing, saying, yeah, babe, um, if you can just like, just clean up those dishes there and I'll help you over here. You know, you want to use these words like, I'll help, um, or um, do you need me to do something? Um, and instead of being like, oh, babe, just do that and do that and do that and do that, you know, instead of not helping. So it will help out if you can use little nice words um, like help and, and ask, you know, if they need assistance, just with doing anything. You don't know what's going on. You don't know what happened to them at work. You don't know if somebody said something to them. You don't know if they're going through, you know, depression and you come home and argue with them. You know, so the first thing you want to do is greet them and ask how their day is once you see them and, and you know, making sure that they are okay and being really nice and sweet. Um, because I've seen situations and you know we human too we experience these things and just want to tell you something um i seen this girl she was being disrespected at work and once that person left disrespecting her and there was a camera actually inside of her workplace and i guess it was just captured and she was like letting it all out she was crying and then someone else was approaching her so she had to hurry up and wipe her tears and put a big smile on her face and i thought that was so amazing you want to appreciate people that is um like that because it's hard it's hard to pull yourself together it's hard to start smelling when you're sad and it may be it may be hard for your husband to smile at you because you know you're going through something it may be hard for your wife to smile at you you know um, we're all human and we should respect each other and i feel like before you know like i said before going to a relationship and, and, and marrying someone you want to make sure it's right so you see god before you actually go into your house you know you want to probably want to say some prayers but you prepare already what you're going to do and say to your spouse you know to make them feel better um and so you always want to prepare going into a situation 
if, if you feel like you need to, you know, um, and it's going to make your husband, your spouse appreciate you even more and want to do something big for you as well. So um, try to be more nice if you can. You can be going through a situation yourself too. Still put a smile on your face just like that lady did. Put a smile on your face and help somebody else feel better. There's a lot of times in my life too I have to, you know, get up from being sleepy and, you know, go outside. And I know I'm feeling all tired and everything and I give somebody a compliment. You know, one day God told me to give someone a compliment and he told me to give someone a certain compliment and I gave them another compliment and I feel bad because like like why did I just do that like what is wrong with me and I feel bad and I said I'm sorry Lord just give me another chance so I came home and I just kind of dropped to my knees I started crying like what is wrong with me why didn't I just give her a compliment and I said, Lord, I'm sorry. Just give me another chance. And but it was it was a um, it was a specific compliment. And then I asked God for another chance. You know, the next day I woke up, I just started cleaning up, doing my thing. You know, and I hear her. I she had you know, it was on my intercom, and I heard her from inside of my home, from the intercom. And I was like. Oh my goodness, that's her! And I ran out my door, and I gave her the compliment. And you know what she did? Do you know what she did? She actually got really happy. She had a big smile on her face. She get all giddy up, and I was so happy. I was so happy because God told me to do it. And when I seen that reaction. That made my day. I, I went right back into the house. I fell to my knees again. I just started crying. And I said, Lord, you are right. You are right all the time. You are right. You don't know what she was going through. She could have been going through suicidal thoughts. She could have been going through struggles with you know, her boyfriend or whoever's in her life telling her bad things. And now she just want to you know, leave the earth because no one's treating her right. She, she wants to feel love. And maybe no one's making her feel love. Maybe people don't give her compliments about herself. But I made her feel good. Well, God made her feel good. And then I felt good giving her the compliment. You know, and she felt really good. So you want to give people compliments when you don't feel good. Or when you don't feel like it. Just do it. Best things happen to us when we don't feel like it, I'm telling you. So whenever you feel like, I don't want to do it, like I'm tired, or no, I'm not going to do that. You better do it because you're going to feel good. Why? Number one, you're pleasing God, and then you're going to feel good because God is going to make you feel good. That's how strong he is. God is so strong. And let us say you're ignoring God, and you know, God's going to do something, and you want to be disobedient. You don't even know that God is using you at that time, giving that dollar to that homeless person or giving somebody a hug or a smile or a wave. You don't know what that's doing to that person. You may make that person not go commit suicide. Because look, I heard the stories. People did not commit suicide because what a person actually did to them. And these things were either a smile or a laugh or a little gesture or like, hey girl, how you doing? You know, or what's up, man? You look really good today. They just want to hear compliments. People want to be filled with love. They don't want to feel down. They want some kind of love. So if you give them one little compliment, one little way, you don't know what that's doing. This elderly woman, she, um, she's seen this autistic girl come out. You know, her parents brought her out. And the autistic girl turned around and smiled at her and like, you know, she was being all happy. And you know what the lady told the parents of the autism girl? She said, keep bringing her out. She said, she made me not want to commit suicide. So this is important. This is so important. You may not feel like coming outside, but God says, go outside. I want to save someone's life. He may have you just walk past someone. And your spirit 
is just done something. Sometimes you don't even have to say anything. Somebody tried to commit themselves on a train one day. God just said, walk past them, Tia. They moved back from that train so fast. Oh, I got so emotional. The simple things that God tells you to do and you cannot do it. He woke you up this morning and gave you breath. You're asking for a husband. You're asking for a wife. You're asking for things, money to pay your bills. But you can't do one little thing God tells you to do. Why should he bless you? You know? So just think about this. Think about this. Obey. If you're praying for God to do something in your life, and he tells you to do something, anything, do it. Because this is going to be a test. This is part of him blessing you with your spouse. You may not know. But how many of us know that we have to prep before we get into a marriage? We have to prep, right? So these little compliments that we're giving other people, we're being prepared to be into that mirror so that we can compliment our spouse. You get what I'm saying? So all the little things that we're being prepared for before marriage, like going to someone's home and, you know, blessing them, cooking for them, and, you know, um, God giving you, getting you used to cooking, you know, for your husband. And, you know, just little simple things. You're probably wondering, like, why am I doing this, God? Don't complain. Don't complain because he's preparing you. You may think that this is the weirdest thing ever, but guess what? You're going to get it at the end of the day. And you say, Lord, wow, I get it now. I get it. So there's some times in my life, I may not know what God is doing, but if he tells me to do things too, and I say, oh, I think that's weird, but I'm just doing it because I think it's God. And God comes out and tells me it was me. And I, I, I'm so pleased. I'm so happy. Why? Because I please God. God says, you know, you please him. He's going to please you. If you read this in Psalms 91, you're going to see these things. You're going to understand. And you, this is something that I read every day that I pray over my life. And, you know, people suggest it that I read it. And I promise you, I never stop reading it. I still read it to this day. Um, so with that being said, obey your spouse when you get married. You know, God says, husband, love your wife. And wives, be submissive to your husband. So we both have to be obedient. And this is obedience to God. When you are disrespectful to your husband and your wife, guess what? You're disobedient to God. Like all that, you know, lusting with the eyes and, you know, looking at other women, that's just pitiful and demonic. It is pitiful and demonic. You, you want to be married, but you, you have your eye on another woman. You know, same goes for the women. Keep your eyes off men. Keep your eyes off the opposite sex. And keep your eye on your man, your, your, your husband. The one who's meant to be. And these are the reasons why, you know, we have problems because we get into a marriage really fast. Like I said, we don't belong in that marriage because we're unequally yoked in that marriage. So in order for you to be happy in a relationship, in order for you to have your eye on your husband, in order for your, your husband to just have his eye on you, this is going to be of God, you know? Everything is patience with God, and then there's gonna be patience in your relationship. It's gonna work out so well because you put God first, and God told you, yes, this is the person you're supposed to be with. And God is gonna, you know, convict your husband for you, your wife for you, um, to show them, you don't supposed to be doing this, you know, act right, and he's gonna keep talking to you. But if you're a disobedient person, you got, you got into a marriage really fast, and you just don't care, like, whatever, you're not listening to God. Therefore, how can he help you? So that's why sometimes, you know, when God tell, talks to me, give me words to go tell someone something, you know, sometimes they don't want to hear it. Why? Because they disobey God, and God tried to talk to them, and I listen, so God sent me. And then they get to really hear, you know, you know, because... I'm, I'm right in front of them. I'm speaking. But, you know, still, God says, listen to me. You know, he, he of course, has to use us. But God says, listen to him. And so how things are going to work out your way if you're not listening to him? So, this is really, really important. Obedience is number one. Before getting into a relationship. Before getting into a marriage. 
because you want to know this thing is your right and you're going to be happy, okay? Uh, and then this one here, Proverbs 31, talks about a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies. So if you know this, you know how to treat a woman. If he's telling you here that this is of a woman, you should be able to treat a woman really well because of what God is saying about a woman here. And all the things that he's talking about her and, you know, this Proverbs 31, if you're reading it and you're really getting into it, you know how you should treat a woman. You should know how to treat a wife. You should know how to treat anyone who is a female. And you should be very respectful. If you know for a fact, you know, you are of God, you want to be respectful to anyone. And, you know, especially a man being respectful to a female that's just so impressive it's, it's like wow like i don't know i just really like to see a man being really respectful to a woman it, it just i don't know it just lights up my day anyone's day like wow that's that's so amazing you're helping out this woman like this you know for a fact that you know you're stronger than us you should not want to like, argue and just do like bad crazy stuff to a woman knowing that she could help you out in many ways too you know so you should be more respectful to her because god told you to and not argue and want to be more you know soft and, and, and you know sensitive with her because she's a female and also you're reading this bible number one and you're seeing what god wants a virtuous woman to do you, you're seeing what god wants women to do so with that being said, you kind of, you know, seek God for how you should treat a woman as well. And that's when you get into the Bible and, and you get into everything that God wants you to do concerning your relationship and how to be, because you have to change first. There's a lot of times people tell me, I want to be married, I want to be married, but sometimes it's just, I can see that they're not ready. <laughs> you don't know how to treat a woman yet. You don't know how to treat a man yet. And there's just so many bosses out there. You can't go into a marriage being a boss or a bossy woman or, you know, a, a bossy man. Men are made with control, of course, in their family and, and you know, marriage and their family. Um, but God has given them this good control. You're supposed to control them in a good way and not a bad way, you know. So I, I believe that once you get into treating people well, it's because it's God. And you start to get blessed and God starts to give you a lot more because you are doing well. You're pleasing him. So whatever you want, whatever that is, husband, wife, car, house, money, job, whatever it is, it's hair growing long, it's going to happen because you are seeking God for all of this. And, you know, this message has been so, so good because, you know, like I said, avoiding arguments and making it seem like oh that person cleaned up that whole day like i told you you came in and did that i don't care if you said oh i have to come in and clean up and i just came back from work so what you know for a fact that your spouse is going through something you know you know that um this could be a situation in your life and in, in your spouse's life they need help. They need you to come and into their rescue. You're helping them out. This is a calling of God, right? You know that you you always preaching to people. You're at church. You're helping people. You're praying for people. Why not help your husband? Why not help your wife who's struggling? So this is just what God has called you to be into. This is ministry. Still, you you're helping out your husband. You're helping out your wife. That's still ministry. And you have to remember that. Don't complain. You can't complain when you go out there and pray for someone. You can't complain when someone is, is, is kind of like, you know, going around like this because they're drunk and, you know, they're high. You're not complaining that they come in and they run past you or step on your feet. Because why? You like it. You like praying for people. You like helping people out, right? So you're not going to get mad at your husband because he laid something around. This is your ministry. You're going to get happy. Oh, this is my ministry. This is my time to help out my husband. This is my time to please God. I'm gonna help. I'm gonna help my husband to be nice to me. I'm gonna help myself be nice to my husband, and we're gonna work this out. 
is part of your ministry. You know, we are not made to just be married and, and happy with each other and, and that's it. We are made to be holy and happy. Why? Because God is in the inside and we're working it out with God. We have God in the center. So I want you to put that in your mind first and everything that I told you today and just try to do it. Put it into whatever you're in your relationship. If you know for a fact you were married to the person God has told you, put that in there. Don't get mad at him and say, huh, do I want to marry him? You know God told you. You worked out. You keep a smile on your face. Some people have to get up and, and make themselves happy. And God tells us to encourage ourselves in the Lord. So, and God tells us to encourage ourselves in the Lord, in his word. So you feel like, okay, well, my husband is doing this and he's doing that. Let me encourage myself. Let me see what to say. Father God, talk to me. You may have to fast and pray too. So you're in the word, you're reading, you're trying to figure out what you should say. And then you feel, okay, I feel good. I feel good. So you have to go in and do these things, then okay, go ahead and do it. This is God talking to you. This is how God speaks to you and show you what to do concerning, you know, that problem. And God is, you know, while you're seeking it out too, he may not ask you right then and there, but he, like I said, he may ask you an hour later uh, after you wake up. So you may fall asleep and have a dream. He, he probably wants to ask you later on. So don't get mad. He wants to ask you in a dream. So just think about that. Okay, well, God wants to talk to me later about it. So. I'll wait for it. I'll wait for you, Lord. Be patient and, and wait for God. Once God see, okay, she's patient. I'm going to bless her with this. She's more like me. She's getting more into being like me. I'm going to bless her with this. Well, he's patient and he's getting more into me. He's trying to wait on me. I'm going to bless you really fast with an answer. So try to do as much as you can for God. And it's not your husband, not your wife. Because when you please your husband, you please your wife, you're pleasing God. Isn't that an answer right there? Isn't that a blessing? So when you disrespect your husband or your wife, God sees you and you're disrespecting God because God tells us to love our husband and our wives. Your husband, be loving to your wives, you know, love your wife, treat them well. And why if you do your husband back and forth, treat them well, love them, respect them, submit to them. And if, you know, you're probably that person like, oh, I'm not gonna do that, and then you're not ready to be married. You're not ready to be submissive. You are not made to be married right now if you are saying these things. So I'm telling you, once you get into a marriage and you're like, well, what did I do? Now it's time to see God for it. And the, the people that is into marriages who don't want to be in these marriages anymore, you have to see God and ask God what to do. And if you read, you know, or, or you can Google uh, how to, you know, work out relationships, in the Bible, you know, these things are going to pop up. And there's different um, scriptures that I go to where it's talking about um, how to be in a relationship and, and work it out or not get a divorce. And, you know, some of the Bible talks about how um, it's easier to be in your marriage just to get divorced. Work it out. And if you are saved and your husband is not saved, like I said, you see God and you ask God what to do. It's really bad then. You know, ask God what to do. He's going to show you. And if you get divorced, okay, it's, it's fine. That's what God wants. He probably wants that. He probably want to bless you with somebody else. You have to believe and, and, and see God after these things. So everything is going to be okay. You don't have to worry. You don't have to be sad. You don't have to cry because he's going to bless you with a happy marriage. And, and don't worry about you know what anyone else is saying or think. You know, you want a, a happy home and you want... You know your kids father around or you know you may be the man you may want the kids mother around and you're just in a bad relationship and you just want out and you're embarrassed because you're not with you know that baby's mother or that baby's father it's okay we all make mistakes and you just have to tell God you're sorry repent to him and tell him you'll do better and you just thought you do better so just seek it out seek it out seek it out Seek the answers by finding God. Seek God and you will find him. Just like the Bible tells us, we seek him, we will find him. Whatever you're searching for in life, you will find it when you do it with God. You know, you, if you find everything with God, it means that you're searching with him as well. So don't 
get ahead of God, you want to stay right on the side of him or, you know, behind him. Wherever he's telling you to go, you go, but make sure that you are, you know, following him. You're right there as he's guiding you. And, you know, the Bible talks about how to work out marriages. If you just read it, read it, read it, you can read um, Corinthians. Um, and then also just like for protection, you want to read like Psalms 91 and Proverbs. Just read it. Any songs, anytime you go to bed, anytime you wake up in the morning time, I would say kind of read both at the same time. Maybe like one chapter of Psalms, one chapter of um, Proverbs every morning before you go to bed and every maybe noon and night. Just keep that going and it will start to talk to you more and more about what God wants you to do. God will really speak to you, I believe. Don't forget about Corinthians. If you have a hard time finding like a Bible, I read, I read the King James Version Bible. And you know you can find breakdowns of the King James Version Bible online. Um, it's called the NIV, and I will read that like if I don't understand a certain thing inside of the King James Version Bible because the King James Version Bible is God's actual word, and this is how He is really speaking. So we want to speak more like God. We want to speak more like Jesus. And we want to speak more like God. And if you don't know Jesus' words in the King James Version Bible is in red. And then God's words are in black. So with that being said, guys, I pray that you are safe and you are well. Thank you for tuning into this video. I thank you for letting God use you. And I thank God for speaking to you through, you know, this message you had me to say. And I pray that you guys' relationships and marriages are always on point together because you have been blessed. And of course, it would get better from here on out. Just keep the faith. Don't doubt, like we talked about that little mustard seed, go ahead and give God that little faith right there because he can grow it for you. So um, know that he will forgive you if you repent to him. If you go and repent to him with a whole heart, definitely he will be there for you. And he's amazing always. He never do anything to you to hurt you. He's always there for you every single day. You have no idea. He have his angels right around you while you know the demons are trying to attack he's have you protected so don't worry about anything and know that he's gonna always answer you and he do things according to how he knows it's gonna fit in your life so don't complain just smile and praise him and thank him for everything knowing that he's gonna be there um so thank you father god for blessing us and i just extend my hands out to you guys and just cover you with the blood of jesus always and I'm praying for each and every one of you guys. And thank you so much, like I said, for tuning in. I love you. Jesus love you more. And God bless you.